Next up, we're going to have Richard come out. And he's going to talk about, you know, what's kind of holding back the major media from entering into the Web3 web space. So we're going to take a look about how, why big media is possibly ignoring or overlooking what they can do in this Web3 space. Round of applause for Richard. Richard, come on out. Thank you, thank you. We're going to switch, uh, switch gears a little bit here, guys. Thank you. Let's see if I can get my laptop up here. I give this talk to a bunch of different audiences, um, and each time I try and vary it a little bit to try and tailor it to the audience we're speaking with. Um, I'm Richard Taub. I am uh, the CFO and also leading our charge into uh, big media NFTs, big media content for Tree Trunk technology. For those who don't know Tree Trunk, we are an R&D project for a consensus mesh, which means we're a Joe Lubin company proud and true. Um, we are founded about uh, eight months ago after years of R&D by our, uh, our CEO, John Wolpert, who some of you uh, may be familiar with. John and our head uh, developer, Andreas Freund. Uh, my background is um, I have been, I've done royalty and content license audits for big media companies for years, which sounds really boring, right? Uh, it's actually fascinating. It's fascinating because you see how money gets lost, how money gets stolen, how money is simply not paid, how money is erroneously calculated. Uh, so you see a lot of things and, and you learn a lot. And we've really de uh, dedicated ourselves to using blockchain technology to fix that. It's a $50 billion problem a year in the US, Canada, and Western Europe. Content owners, including artists, not getting paid what they should. Um, and people typically ask me, you know, well, what's the big deal with NFTs? You know, why, haven't, why hasn't big media jumped in NFTs? There's so much good content. We know there's great content. You can think of your favorite movie, your favorite sports team, your favorite sports athlete, your favorite, favorite singer. Why are they not doing this? And there's many reasons. I chose only six. I could probably come up with 20 why big media is not jumping into NFTs, why they won't anytime in the near, near future. But there's also a couple reasons why they must. And only one of them is money. So, uh, and I'll, I'll get into a little bit about um, the more salient reasons here. I'm going to save the actual slides until the end, um, but I'll, I'll walk you through what is going on in the minds of big media. If you're going to take a meeting, you're going to go to whether it's Warner Brothers, the NFL, Simon & Schuster, it doesn't matter. The same reasons are always present. Um, and I'll give you, I, I, I separate everything into three groups, really. There's risk for big media, there's reward for big media, and then there's what I call strategic congruence. And that's a major philosophical problem that I'll get into in about three minutes. <clears throat> so first, risk. You talk with a big media company, sports team, whomever, whoever it is, you can probably think of what the most obvious areas of risk are for them. Um, the first one is all kinds of IP management, content licensing. Our GC, our lawyer in the back there, Ira Rothkin, is probably the, one of the smartest minds in the world on this. Um, content licensing and all forms of insulation that a big company needs to insulate and protect itself against all kinds of copyright problems. They might need to create subsidiaries, LLCs, for every NFT, for every piece of content. There are new and advanced licensing agreements, indemnification requirements that they may need, anti-piracy. Here's something that big media has never had to worry about. Warner Brothers has never had to worry about KYC or AML. And now we're telling them, trust us. NFTs are great. You have no risk. It's great. Don't worry about KYC, AML of course they're going to be frozen and they're going to say, what the hell is this? What do we have to do? We got to get smart. So that's the first reason that uh, 
that big media shies away and should ignore NFTs for now. They're not comfortable with that. Uh, second reason, it's an unknown future. You know, they don't know how much to invest right now in their resources. You might say, guys, you have a Scarface NFT, your Universal Studios. It's one of the most iconic moments in film. All right, so what are they going to invest? How do they know what to do? How do they know how many people, how much CapEx? What are they going to do to, uh, to acquire any rights they may not have? Imagine if you're the finance guy trying to figure that out, trying to tell your bosses, we need, I need $100,000. Even at that level, it's not easy. Uh, there's intermediary risk. I referred to that before. Intermediary risk is when you have a third party. Um, in Web 2, intermediaries are people like Amazon, Comcast, DirecTV, Hulu. Um, all the sports leagues have intermediary risk with their streamers. Um, you have, as I said, payment cheating, payment fraud, un innocent underpayments, erroneous payments. You have the cost of developing, maintaining agreements. You have to trust, in this case, with NFTs, you have to trust startups. How many people in Universal Studios want to bank their career, their political capital, on trusting a startup? With their, with their crown jewels. It's, it's, it's extremely difficult. Other fear of the unknown is crypto. Crypto, wallets, we're talking another language. Big media is not ready to hear that. Typically, there's a couple people who really get it, who own NFTs in every studio. Those people are few and far between. They're still evangelizing. It's gonna take a while. Other risk is and this is, I'll get to, this is one that's shared across risk, reward, and strategic congruence, and I'll get to this a little bit more also. Distribution, how do they distribute NFTs? This is something that's never talked about at this conference, anywhere else. You can come up with a great NFT. Where are you going to distribute it? Can Universal Studios put the Scarface NFT on OpenSea? Does anyone think that's easy to do? It's one click away from a lot of other NFTs that they don't want to be near. Um, there's also the strategy, and you know, everyone learns in college marketing the four Ps of, of marketing. The four Ps are product, place, price, promotion. Well, product, we know what the product is. Price, they can set a price, it can be an auction. Um, the question is place and promotion. How do you do that? So I'll get to that a little bit more in a sec. So those are some of the, uh, the risk factors, or, or the reasons, those are four reasons why big media should ignore NFTs with regard to risk, but I also said there's another category called reward. So here are the two, two big reasons why big media companies are very slow with NFTs with regard to what their return is going to be, their financial return. Number one is modeling the return. How do they know how much they're gonna make? Where do they get comparables? How do you create that financial model? What's the discount factor? These are all financial questions, but the finance guys are, have to, are going to have to answer these, and they're going to have trouble. Another reason, um, it related, really related to modeling, but is there going to be adequate return? For all of this risk, they need 20x within three years for any dollar spent. It's a lot, right? Where do you get 20x in the markets? You know, that's, that's a hefty price, but the reason why there's a premium there is for all the risk that I just described. So you have to say, can they make 20x? That needs to, that you have to hit that for people to pay attention. So that's risk and reward. I mentioned something called strategic congruence, which people kind of question, well, what does that mean? That means D to C, direct to consumers. Media companies must now go direct to consumers. That's why they have their own platforms. That's why Universal has invested billions in Peacock. They cannot go through third parties as much anymore, and that's a philosophical as much as a business decision. They cannot offload the consumer data, the consumer relationship, and the payment mechanisms to third parties like they used to. That's, that's, that's changed for good. That's never going to come back. So with all of this, you know, what happens? I'm going to give a, 
a couple slides here to show what happens. You know, this is Amazon Prime. You know, this is really a, an example of what you would see here on OpenSea. It's the same thing. You could be one content owner in a literal open sea or figurative open sea of a lot of different content. Very difficult now for big media to accept. You can create NFTs. You could possibly put them on your own website, but you know, there, is there a Scarface website? It's not easy to do either. This is the Universal Studios, or you know, yeah, this is the Universal website. Who goes to this? It's, it's, it's a nice looking website, I wouldn't go to it. Rotten Tomatoes, is that a good spot? Nah, probably not. And this is the last one. This doesn't work either. This is the Facebook page. So they have a lot to figure out in big media as to where they're gonna, where they're gonna put their NFTs. So as John Wolpert, our CEO, says, well, what do you do? The answer we tell everyone is rapid baby steps. It's a lot of trial and error. So thank you. Thank you, Richard. I appreciate it.